This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show is back. I'm Pete Corielli, of course, Sebastian Maniscalco. How you doing, brother? What's up? What's up? What's but, up? Um, Monday, going yeah. into the week here, coming off the weekend. Uh, special thanks to everybody in Los Angeles who came out to the show at the Fabulous Forum. Uh, Sold out. Unbelievable, dude. Wow. It, uh, <laughs> it's one of those places where when I moved out to Los Angeles in 1998, I think in 99, I went to go see Bon Jovi at the Forum. And, uh, of course, had many memories of the Forum, watching the Los Angeles Lakers in the 80s and then subsequently the Chicago Bulls in the 90s, winning their first ever NBA championship right on the floor at, uh, at the, the Forum, beating the Los Angeles Lakers. So... I never thought I'd be performing at a, one of these places. You know, sometimes it's like you see this stuff growing up, and then next thing you know, you're 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 in it. So, great show! Awesome. Um, people were really really excited, and and rightfully so. The people of Los Angeles have been in a in a prison for the last two years. Yeah, and uh, they were out in full force, wanting to laugh, but. Uh, and, and I don't normally, you know, say who comes to the shows or whatnot, but, you know, I think this one definitely needs a mention. So, uh, so DiCaprio comes to the show, right? <laughs> Unbelievable. You had texted me some for the listeners. I'm not going crazy, but you had texted me this morning, but unbelievable, dude. Yeah. So that's it. Now, that's it. That's as big as it anyone else. If DiCaprio leaves the green room. And then they go, oh, another guest is here, unless Sinatra was dug up somehow like Pet <laughs> Cemetery and comes strolling in. I just met DiCaprio. Everyone else, you know, see you when I see you. <laughs> wow. So, wow, man. So cool. I got to tell you one thing he did, which I thought was one of the classiest things I've ever seen in my entire life. <clears throat> He comes in, and he came to the show two years ago at the Forum. So he came back then, and it was a little bit more hectic. Kevin Hart was at that show, and I had a lot of people backstage and whatnot. So it wasn't as intimate as it was this time around because I just had my immediate family, my sister, her family. My mother was back there. Lana was back there, uh, Lana's friend. So not my, you know, my manager and what have you. Wow. So he comes still, in. Still a lot of people. Yeah, but it wasn't like a like a big party atmosphere. Yeah, right? it is what it is. Yeah, you're doing a big show, and it's such, yeah, I get it. That's not a big thing in comparison. Yeah, so he comes in. He's there with his. He brought his father and his stepmother and his girl, and uh, he says, uh, "Last time your your father was here, and he was." And my father got a photo with him and what have you and, and whatnot. And I go, yeah, no, he's not here, but you know, my my mom and my sister are here. And I kind of like make a mention to where they're sitting. And he goes over and introduces himself to my mother. <sighs> hey. If that was my mom, I, as soon as he walked away, I'd go to my mom. That was your Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> when you don't get something this Christmas, that was it right there. Wow. What is he? By the way, does he say, hi, I'm Leo? I mean, I so I guess that's what they all do. We got to be normal, but it's like. I, I wasn't even. I just, they, they had their own little yeah. thing. They said, and my mom, you know, she's Hollywood through and through. I mean, my grandmother loved Hollywood. I mean, just loved stars and whatnot. My mom's the same way. She just loves, you know, celebrities and and Leonardo DiCaprio is one of her, you know, favorites. So another chit chat over there. Right? And then he comes back and I'm talking to uh you know, just the people there and then uh my mom comes over and she goes, I gotta get a picture with you. And thank, thank God. And, and we had a photographer th for there, so it took a beautiful shot. 
Oh, of she my, said that to to Leo. Yeah. So oh, my mom. Oh, okay. <laughs> Of course, so, I bet he was really polite. Like, no problem, right? No problem. No awesome. problem. And and the guy is like low key. Yeah, you know, I mean, this guy arguably is the biggest movie star in the world, man. Right? I mean, can, can I you say that? I don't know what the argument is, guy. I, I mean, I'm not even saying open it with arguably. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, there's like like The Rock, right? He's a movie star, but this this is like a different. This is different like thing. a different thing, right? It's like old school. Like I could see like, you know, like your mom saying your mom, this guy is old school movie star. Like, you know, like, yeah, he's, yeah. He, he's a freaking uh, chameleon. He turns into anything he does. He's got a little Jack Nicholson in him in a good way, which I like. Just like really living the life. You know, I like, like I feel better about myself when I see a photo of Leo on a yacht, little overweight, eating grapes with a few people <laughs> around him, you know? <laughs> just, everything's normal in the world, you know? <laughs> he does he does have that throwback uh persona. You know, if there was a, like a Clark Gable or a yes. um you know, you know, Brando. He's got that. That's what he's got going for him. It's it's that type of, uh, you know, fifties yeah. bravado he's got. And uh, and funny too, man. The guy is fucking funny. I, I, I believe it. Yeah, it just it's not one of those. Yeah, because I've been around like some celebrities, and it's it's awkward sometimes because it's like you don't know what to say, or it's like. You kind of you know you kind of sitting there looking at one another, but this guy, boom, he's he's got he's got it, man. He's got personality. He's uh, he's dialed in. So he's it was funny like, in the movies that he plays that are funny. He's always funny. I mean, I don't know if you saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but there he was just hilarious. It was great. Yeah, he seems like a funny guy. Yeah, he's got a great comedic timing. Uh, you know, I recently uh, saw Wolf of Wall Street. And that that movie's funny. I mean, he's funny in that. Right? Yes, yes, exactly. So, um, so anyway, we we do the show, and then I have a party back at the house, right? Invited about mm, twenty five to thirty people, and I got to give a, a round of applause here for Lana. I mean, this one thinks of things that I would never think of. She goes, uh, "On the way home, we're going home." This is after the show. Yeah, she was like a little, a little surprise for the party. By the way, we we hired a bartender, to, and I'm not again, not not pat myself on the back here, but we got this bartender that we really like. Yeah, and when I have a party, I don't want to be, and we talked about this before, buried making drinks and this and that. I don't want to do that. Right. I want to I want to talk to the people at the party. So we got this bartender, Mark, who's just phenomenal. He. Uh, He's working the thing. And then Lana goes, I got a little extra something coming. I said, what? Corn dog cart. <laughs> no. no that's a, that, is that a hot dog dipped in batter, right? Yeah, like a corn dog. Right. Or you would see like at a fair, you know? Okay. And and that guy's got his little cart, and he's off in the corner. He's got a veggie dog, and he's got a beef dog, little mustard, little ketchup. It's right, eleven thirty right. at eleven thirty at night. Maybe you had dinner before the show. Feeling it's a, a little nice hungry. Late night, beautiful late night snack. Beautiful snack. Beautiful. So uh, yeah, the party went nice. We had people come. Um, it's funny, and, and, and everybody listening, I think, could relate to this. When you have people over to your house, we had about 25, 30 people, all in the kitchen, bro. I swear to God, I, oh. got, I, got, I got some room in this house, right? <laughs> they were consolidated, yeah. literally, into a, I don't know, like a five 600-square-foot area. It's unbelievable. We just had people over yesterday for a birthday party. Every I said to Jack, everybody's in the kitchen all around. Just why do we migrate to the kitchen? I I, I don't know because the cart the 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 hot dog cart was outside. So I'm saying the food's in the dining room table here too. It's not even in the kitchen. <laughs> I said to Lana, I go when we remodel the house, we should just make half of the house the kitchen. 
No shit. I'm going to put five sinks around my living room because everyone comes over, <laughs> the men especially, they crack a beer and they, and they lean over my sink. Every one of them. It's like, and if one goes to piss, another one takes his place before he gets back. What, why do we just drink a bottle? It's unbelievable. I'm right there with you. Just one giant kitchen. I mean, listen, if you put a refrigerator, say, where your living room is right now, would yeah. people automatically gravitate towards the living room just because there was a refrigerator in there? That's a good question. I don't know what aspect of the kitchen is bringing them to the kitchen. I think, <laughs> I think and I know you got this, too. They love islands. And island oh, is like, like you know, when you make a little trap to attract ants, if you were making a human trap, I'd put a fucking <laughs> island in the middle of the thing. Oh, an island. Let's go sit around it. Let's go sit around it. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy Christ. That's what I'm saying. If you if you put two kitchens in your house, one right. where the kitchen is now and a, and a replica right. in, in the <laughs> living room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where would they go? Oh, <laughs> That would be fantastic, man. Like, and I know you got that long way to your living room. If your living room was just, I walk out of your kitchen, all of a sudden it just becomes the kitchen again. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> heaven, man. Heaven right there. Oh, my God. Can you just imagine people coming over going, listen, if you want to hang out in the kitchen over here, that's great. But also in the kitchen over there, we got beer. And I can be, what? You got two kitchens? <laughs> Double kitchen, man. <laughs> Double kitchen. Now, oh. I got I to ask a side note here, right? So, like, and I know, obviously, you're excellent at what you do. You're playing the forum. But, like, this coming weekend, I'm playing that Paramount show. And it's just oh, yeah. about it's just about sold out. And it's an exciting one for me, right? And I got a lot of people I know. And I'd love to, I'm trying to figure out, you know, maybe hanging at the bar there or something and having some drinks. But I worry about, well, if it doesn't go that good. And then I'm like, oh, I got to go out there. And now they got to pretend it went better than it did. And I'm going to start asking, yeah, yeah, I'm going to change the subject right away. Like, yeah. Like, or do you just go, it's going to go good. And you got all the confidence in the world. Then that's it. Yeah, I never think that. Never think that. I never think it's going to go bad. Uh, well, that's, that's <laughs> <I don't> <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, other things in life, I go, this ain't like the movie. I was like, this, this is going to go bad. Right, because I'm just not used to doing it. Right, but, right, right. But like comedy, you've been doing it so long, you got to figure whatever you're doing up there is working. So you know, it, just tr trust. It. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. But yeah, I mean, like, uh, I don't mean bad. Like, I'm not gonna bomb. I know that. But you know, sometimes, uh, man, I've had nights where like I forgot to do a joke that I really wanted to do and it annoyed me. So like, I, you know, it's almost like when you when you're an athlete. We talked about like, and you invite someone to meet you after the game. And then you have a bad game or something, and you're like, oh, hey, fucking do that photo. <laughs> <laughs> but the difference, but, go ahead. Yeah. But if you have a great show and you didn't make plans, then I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm literally in an Uber going back to my <laughs> shitbox hotel. What am I doing? What am I doing? Now, one person is here telling me nice job. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you played the Paramount before? No, I went. I went to see you there, and I. I think I may have went and seen Jim Brewer too there, or Kevin. I can't remember. I think. All right. So, did you go into that like that deep underground like cave yes. they got? Took the yeah. whole tour of that whole place. It's yeah, stunning. It's great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So you it's you know my wardrobe. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't go with my usual uh, TJ Maxx flannel. <laughs> <laughs> So you you know when you perform there, they give you a brick from the place. Do you know this? No, I got to bring a bag now. No, they give you, yeah, they give, <laughs> they give you a brick that they built the place with. Oh, they got a wow. bunch of these leftover bricks, and then in the brick, they engrave the date of your show, your name, and uh, in in the in the brick. So it's it's pretty cool. Wow. I mean, I, I've never. Sure that's is that every show, or am I gonna like be, after the show be like, "Where's the brick?" And they're gonna no, 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 no. <laughs> 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 well, it's for everybody, guy. But good job. <laughs> Where's the bricks? We're using them to make the new fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> you see the lineup we have this year? We can only dole out ten bricks. You see who's coming? <laughs> oh God! Oh, shit! Yeah, no, but I'm like, I'm looking forward to it now. So your party, I want to get back to this party, man. Um, 
so everyone who comes was at the show, obviously, right? That's why you were having the party? Yeah, so everybody, uh, you know, we, we thought about having the party at the forum, but then if you do that, you start, you know, there's, we did that last time, and it was like just too many people there, and I really couldn't uh, hang out with the people I really wanted to hang out with, so this time we said, you know, let's make it more of an intimate gathering back at the house. You know, it's it's a 40-minute drive to get back at back to my house, eh, maybe even 35 right. minutes, uh, which is a haul, but once you get there you're you're there yeah. i mean it, it's uh yeah. so yeah i went i went to bed now i gotta be honest with you uh last week i had a bet with my uh trainer that i could lose four pounds in five days and oh, i ended cool. and i ended up losing six right so that week prior leading up to the show i was in the gym and doing some some big workouts so <laughs> that 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 day saturday uh was the last day of the that was the weigh in i did the show and i celebrated that night i had some wine and what have you went to bed at two o'clock yeah now you know as well as i do when you got kids it's it's an automatic alarm there's no you yeah. know the, the longer the night goes it's not like you're gonna extend that sleep you know like oh, i get to bed at two i'll wake up at 10. you're getting up when your kid wakes up right 100 absolutely yeah uh, your best bet at that point is trying to deduce if i can bang out a nap later tomorrow okay after the initial onslaught by the way did you bet your trainer uh another make another bet that uh you could lose six pounds in three days and make him another bet say, and I could gain six pounds in a day if you want to want to double down. <laughs> but what are you going to do a show or fucking fight, uh, you know, Hector Camacho or something? Bro, show my age. I don't even know the fucking latest boxes. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and, uh, man, I woke up you know, to, to Serafina. You know, yelling, hey, hey, you know, because when she gets up, she's screaming for mommy and daddy. So anyway, yeah, I go, yeah. I go, I go in there, and I'm just laying in bed with her, right? Or just now, talking. did Lana make a move? Because usually, if, if 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 you're both hungover, it's always the the wife is usually like, they don't even move, they don't even consider it if you're home. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, you're talking about you're talking about the wife. They don't move if you're home. They don't move, right? Right. Like, yeah. 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 That, yeah. Exactly. They don't and, even do the, the fake kind of like, oh, you got it. Just like no movement at all. Like sometimes they announce it the night before, right? You ever get that? <laughs> By the way, tomorrow when they wake up, don't even think about. As Jackie says, just don't even think about. It. Tell every, and everybody keep it down. All right. <laughs> like I'm, I'm because she yells loud, right? Yeah. And and I sleep light, so as soon as I hear it, I'm up. And my wife's out, and, and I'm like, in my head, I go, "You don't hear that? <laughs> or are you fake it? Are you faking it? No. I, what is it? I slept over your house one time, and Serafina woke me up, and I was like two corridors away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so I go in there, Lana sleep, and I go in there. And I'm laying down, and Serafina's, you know, come on, Daddy, come on, Daddy. And it's like your daughter, right? She's so happy. It's, uh, come on, let's play, Daddy. And and, and I'm, my head is throbbing, right? Yeah. So I get up. I play a little bit. I go make her breakfast. We get that whole thing going. And I pull this move later on in the day. I don't know if you've ever <laughs> pulled this move. I was in her bedroom. I was getting, you know, something. I think I left uh, my phone in her bedroom. Whatever. I was so tired. I just slept in her bed. You ever pull that move? <laughs> Banging out a nap in your kid's bed. <laughs> nice. Oh, God. I was oh. exhausted. Did you, did you, ever, oh, did you ever laying and you hear them wondering where you are? Like, you oh, hear your family. Uh, oh, family God, God, it's there. It's there. I mean, you ever sleep, a half asleep, and you hear, where, where's daddy? <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, he's, he, he's a loser. <laughs> he, he's, a, he's, he's a loser. He's sleeping in your bed. 
Oh. What the fuck? <laughs> Still smelling like wine and smoke. <laughs> laying in the kid's bed. Yeah. Shit. Oh, God. Yeah, they don't register the hangover at all. That's like nothing to them. They don't register anything. And this is what we did because we're kind of tired of this. When Caruso gets up in the morning, he's like, ah! Yeah, he's just screaming, crying. He he wakes up in a bad mood, this kid. So last night we told him, listen, when you get up in the morning, don't cry, don't scream. Ring this bell. He's got like a little bell, right? Yeah. yeah. So we didn't know if he was going to do this. Right. He, he woke up this morning. He took the bell bell from the top of the head and just gave it a little jiggle. I'm like, this, this is beautiful. No, no, wait, no, who got him? Who got him? <laughs> fucking, this is, <laughs> bro, <laughs> this is fucking nuts. <laughs> so who gave him the bell? I mean, I mean, who, who goes to get him when he rings the bell? You? I was working out at the time. Lana was the one who heard the bell, and she went in there to get him. All right. Now, don't you please tell me you see where this is going, because I've known you long enough to know I know where this is going. Where, where's this going? Where's this, this is going? going where you and Lana looking at each other one, one morning going, why do we keep getting them with the bell? I don't have the time. You don't have the time. Let's get a, <laughs> let's get a guy to, to answer the bell. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, and then you're going to go, well, let's put him in a tuxedo. Uh, <laughs> you know? And then, and then let's call him James. <laughs> Fucking James. Bro, you, you could have a butler by the time the kid's in third grade. I oh, swear. Oh, God. <laughs> I can't believe you don't see that. The bell? I mean, at least give him a whistle or something, guy. Oh, that's a good one, dude. That's a good. Well, no, we don't want to give anything too loud. The bell is like he just rings it a little bit, and it's almost like a front desk bell. You know, like it's just like a ding, 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 and then I know it's it's a, it's luxury. It constitutes luxury. It's what rich people use when they need someone to make noise, but they don't want it to be irritating. You know? It's a little bell. <laughs> I mean, do you ever watch uh, Down Abbey? That's what they have. They got in the. It's a great movie about the 1800s when they're rich. They got strings in every room that run down to the servants' quarters. And when you pull your string, it rings a little bell, and then there's a name under the bell, so they know who who needs something, and they go to that room. <laughs> Fucking Gilded Age, yeah. That's oh what you're doing. shit, man! I didn't even, I didn't even think of it I, that way. I, th I just thought like, instead of this kid screaming his head off, yeah. just ring, ring the bell and we'll come in, man. It's beautiful. It's been, a, it's, it is a beautiful move. It's just, uh, you know, how do we keep this kid grounded <laughs> <laughs> when he's ringing a bell for service? <laughs> It's the same thing as like calling room service. You you call room service, bring me the food. Yeah, this is right. which like come get me. people is a couple of times a year. It's very exciting. It's called vacation, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's, uh, he's you know, in his like, listen, he's in what? his crib. Is it the only right. reason we're doing the only right. reason he's calling us? And he told us last night, he's like, I scream and yell because I can't get out of my crib. Right. So I need I need you to get out of the crib. So as soon as in his bed yeah, is coming, yeah. his, yeah. his bed is coming soon. So we're gonna lose the bell soon. Well, I'm just. I mean, have either one of your kids ever used a, a pacifier? No. Uh, my my daughter did. It wasn't too hard to get her off because Jackie just ripped it out of her mouth and said, "You're done." <laughs> <laughs> but, but my point is, you know, you can take the kid out of the crib, but it's gonna be tough getting the bell out of the palm of his hand in the morning, guy. <laughs> he's, every morning with another ding, he's getting more and more used to that thing. <laughs> Eggs, please. <laughs> what? Yeah, and that's what's gonna happen. You're gonna go to Lana. And by the way, we already hired this guy. Why do we only have him work, working for Caruso's Bell? Why don't we all have bells? So there you go. <laughs> and when I come over as a guest, guy, is there a bell on the end? Of my <laughs> oh, oh yeah, you're damn well. That's gonna be right on the pillowcase. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> oh, by oh, the way, fuck. 
There is a show. I got a side note here. I wanted to tell you because you're so into uh, parties and stuff that I thought you would love this idea. The show I'm watching now on HBO, it's called The Gilded Age. And this one, the same people that made Downton Abbey, Downton Abbey, it takes place in America during the uh, 1800s, like uh, early 1800s or something like that. Wait, yeah, late 1800s. And it's like the rich people in New York City, the Astors, the Vanderbilts, like old, old money and all their mansions. So this one woman who is now uh, lives on the Fifth Avenue in a mansion, but her money is new money because they made it in the railroad. So people with old money look down upon people with new money. Oh, yeah. So she's having a party, and finally she gets all these people to come, and this really important guy is coming, and if he likes your party, he writes about you in the paper and blah, blah, blah. Everybody sits down, gorgeous house, just stunning, a fucking mansion. And when you open up your linen napkin, you have your own personal gift wrapped in the linen napkin, but we're talking like five, and our time would be like $1,500 gifts, like a nice watch. Then the guy who writes for the paper opens up his napkin, and uh, he's a heavy smoker, cigarette case, diamond, a like, couple diamonds around it with his Ooh. initials across it. And you're like, oh, God, we all get gifts as we open on oh. napkin. Personal <laughs> gifts, personal expensive gifts. That's so, a nice touch I'm now. Oh, man, oh, man. <laughs> so I just tell a lot of when I come over in April, if I end up having dinner over and I open up my napkin, there better be some cufflinks in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> What's going on? Oh, Sunday, we got another party, bro. I got to tell you, man. Yeah. It, it's, it's party central over here. Coming out of this pandemic, bro, this one's going to be called Tacos Tennis and tequila hey All right. yeah so we're gonna have like a mexican theme and when i did that show well done we highlighted a restaurant called called the teddy's red tacos yeah yeah and they're gonna come over and do the tacos bro i, I mean right. just, you put a party at the end of the week yeah yeah the, the week just there's something to look forward to, bro. I'm just laughing at the idea that you think tennis is Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to wrap my head about that part. I get the tacos and uh, <laughs> tequila, but... Uh, <laughs> all tees, all tees, bro. Right. I, 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 Damn, <laughs> you know, is there any word for soccer that starts with a T? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh, shit. So you're playing tennis, too, at this party? No, no, no. I'm not going to play tennis, but... Um, I want to get here's 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 something. You I'd said tennis. I, yeah, I know. I said tennis. I'm not playing though. Oh, are you gonna? Well, you gonna have like games going on? Or are you gonna have? The yeah, yeah. We're gonna, the tennis yeah. Court? No, no, no. We're having game. Like, uh, we're gonna we're gonna have uh, games. Yeah, yeah. So, but here here's here's my here's my thing. Yeah. We talked about this before. I want these parties to be a staple on Sunday. Obviously, we're not gonna right. have them every Sunday, but. This is the third one we've had in the last four weeks. So I had someone say, we can't come to the party because our kids got like a, a recital. Right? Mm -hmm. I told Lana, I go, I want it to be so good where the family goes, we, you got to miss your recital. That, 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 that's how that's how that's how much of a staple I want this thing to be in people's lives, right? Right. That right. That, that they that whatever they got planned, that whatever's going on, they can't yeah. miss the party. Right. That's I, I hear that, but that's why I was saying like last week. Then I mean, they can easily say though, "Oh, we'll catch it next week." You're having them too often. It should be once a month. Then they really be kicking themselves because now they know they're gonna have to wait at least a month, man. Bro. I'm telling you right now, each party is better than the last one. And I'm not talking extravagance. I'm just talking the people. The people that were, I mean, it's curated, bro. <laughs> La La Lana, we're, we, were making the, we were making the guest list. Yeah and, yeah. and she starts like rattling off some names like, you know, should we invite this or that? <clears throat> I go, well, we invited them two weeks ago. And to be honest with you, these parties, when the people come, 
right. it's it's like their audition to get in to the callback, which is the <laughs> next party, man. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, some people don't know the lines, bro. They ain't getting invited back, man. Is it is it obvious what is needed to get invited back? I mean, like, what if I'm a polite guy, but I'm a little shy in the corner? Is that like, you know, hey, hey, nice to have you. Hope you got a good look around. <laughs> well, it's funny. What I do at a party, yeah. I kind of look to see what clusters of people tend to be having a good time. And I look at other clusters and start, like, looking at other people going, oh, okay, and don't don't really hang out with the group or you know i i get i talk to people that were at the party after the party i talk to them maybe at school or or what have you or at practice and then i was talking to so and so and they give me information on the person that I didn't know or whatnot, and they go, ah, oh, good to know, good to know, and then I go back and I make the list for the party. Sometimes I go, okay, maybe that person doesn't fit in with this group. Leave right. them out. Maybe we'll bring somebody else in. I feel like a general manager of a football team putting the right. pieces together for a championship wow. run, bro. Wow. I got, I got two questions now. Wow, yeah. this is getting heavy. My first question is, Based on what I know from you from doing the cast and all the listeners know, it sounds to me like the people that don't get invited back to your party are the way you are at a party. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like the ones that don't talk much, that are in the corner, that don't look like that. I'm like, he's describing himself at every other party but his own. <laughs> I, I don't want someone like me. At right. my own party. Uh, that's what. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like the pressure's on. Now, my second question I got to ask: If I lived in L.A., would I have an automatic invite to everyone, or would it be certain? Oh yeah, no. You like you don't fit the bill on this one. No, 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 no. Right. You're in. You're, you're in. You're, you're the type of personality that just co-mingles with a lot of different people. Even you're you're like a chameleon. You'll adapt to the people who are at the party. You have yeah, that ability, think. yeah. You know, you you could go. You want to go. You want to go this way. You want to go that way. You'll go whichever way you're walking into. Right. So, yeah. So yeah, that that's that goes without saying. So we got this thing coming up on Sunday. Now on the way to school today, Lana and I were talking about you know, who to invite. Da, 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 and uh, yeah, Lana listens to the cast, so this is not not any surprise to her. But I got to bring this up because I need your take on it. Yeah. To me, the car is a place where the only thing you should bring inside your vehicle right. is is the keys. Okay? Yeah. Well, that's, that's your thinking. That's well, not even close to mine. Okay. If you're obviously going to the beach, you put bring the beach stuff. Or whatever. I'm not talking right. about not putting anything in the, the car at all, but right. generally speaking, and I'll give you an example. Lana in the morning brings a plastic cup of eggs, scrambled eggs yeah. into the car so she could eat them on the way to school when we're dropping off the kids. Uh -huh. right? Right. Now, I don't know if you've ever smelt eggs in a mm -hmm. car. Yeah. It's like it's like a fart that lasts 25 minutes. That's, that's an aggressive food to bring into a car. It's aggressive. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Now, I have told her. Really? It's the eggs? I, I, what way? I, I, no, I'm, I'm with you. I, I, I yeah. adore Lana, but, you know, you get a yogurt. You know, it's a banana. Grab a banana. Yeah, yeah. I, I think a, a scrambled, hot scramble in a plastic cup. I don't know, hey, I, I don't know. why don't you just bring a fucking waffle into the car? Holy shit! <laughs> you know, I mean, that's like a meal. We're getting into meal territory now. That's what I'm saying. So right. I, I've I voiced my displeasure with the eggs, right. and she's still doing it, right? Is so, Serafina like I don't I don't want to smell like egg walking into school. I mean I it's, it's it's lingering. Well today. So so I, I, I get like a 
and I gotta get a hold of this because I'm I'm a 48 year old grown man. So now I do the, I, now I do the, uh, I roll down the windows. You, 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 you ever do the, you know, you look, you look over and you, 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 you make, you make it verbally aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, and, absolutely. You roll down the window. <laughs> Sometimes you take it, you take it further than you really need to. You know what I mean? Like if you were alone in the car, you wouldn't have put the window down that much. But to make your point, <laughs> that is su sucking in L.A. fumes because you don't want to smell a delicious egg. I mean, come on, yeah. <laughs> so, so Serafina starts to go, I'm cold back here, right? Oh, pick a side, kid. So, <laughs> right? But I go, well, if mommy would stop bringing eggs in the car, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Serafina was bitching about the egg smell. And I don't know if you've ever had this where your kid's complaining about something your wife is doing. And internally, you're like, yeah. You know, like she's saying what I want to say to my wife. Yeah. Oh, so gosh. I'm like, oh, give it to her, give it to her. So, yeah. So I'm in a, I'm in a, what, what Lana calls a bitch bath on the way to school, right? I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm bathing in my, this egg shit. And here's something, here's something she's, <laughs> it's all, <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm with you with everything you're saying, but, after you made your point and stuff, I mean, you still, you, 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 the egg thing, I mean, this is the gremlin that your psychiatrist is talking about. This is a five-minute thing. It should be rolling right off you. It's no. been done with the egg at this point for 10 minutes. No. No. She's like, she's eating, the, the ride is 20 minutes, right? Yeah. It, 12 minutes in, she's eating this egg. I'm like, how much is it in the cup? <laughs> so, so, oh, shit. Here's another thing she's doing. And it's like, a, bro, it's a one-two punch. Yeah. After she's, done, after she's done with the eggs. Oh, God. She takes out a disposable toothbrush. And she's brushing her teeth in the car. Wow. 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 This okay. is... You, you don't eat, you're not even comfortable if someone is in your car with a cup of coffee with a lid on. It, what I am proud to see is Lana is like, she has no fear or intimidation of you whatsoever. I mean, None. She's practically hanging laundry across the dashboard at this point. Holy shit. Brushing your teeth? Guy, truckers don't even brush and drive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Even they wait till they're peeing at the urinal at the rest stop. Oh my! <laughs> I mean, do you got tinted windows, guy? Bro, bro. No, this is like if somebody pulled up, they would see her like going to tie. And, 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 and again, she's brushing like she's going to the Oscars. What the <laughs> heck? <laughs> oh shit! What the fuck? <laughs> So uh, just, just 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 another reason not to have the egg in the car if you're gonna have to brush after the egg, you know? That's what I'm saying, man. I'm saying like I got this misophonia thing where I get like really annoyed of people, you know, doing small things. Right. Uh, uh, someone brushing their teeth in the car. Right. I'm sorry. It like I, I at that one point I was going about 35 miles an hour. I actually thought if I just opened the door and flew out of the car, would I be able to survive? I mean. <laughs> That's how much it was bothering me. Not only that, not only that, which and I told and I told her I don't like this either, right? I said, come on, could, could you do like me, you know? And you know, she kinda like she hears it, but she's like, hey, you, you know. All right. All right. In the glove compartment, she's got about 15 of these toothbrushes. Huh. Oh, 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 so when she's done with one, she tosses it. Well, yeah, it's disposable. It's all, all the right. toothpaste is already in there. She brushes. Oh. And she puts it in the cup now. Well, she's I'm got a system. I got to give credit for she, that. She's got a system, but I'm thinking about doing this tomorrow. What do you think? Uh, uh, I'm thinking of taking all the toothbrushes out of the, the glove compartment. So when she goes to brush, nothing's right, there. Right, right. You, you think that's out of bounds? You think I'm, I'm, I'm opening myself up for another argument? What do you, I, what do you think? The only... The only 
The only way maybe you offset that is right around when she's about to ask for the brush, because it's usually after your daughter's out of the car, right? If you know of like a pump, no, no, the daughter's still in the car. Everybody's still in the car. She, what she's doing is she's brushing her teeth because now we're gonna go into school. She's probably gonna see some parents or whatever. Right, right. And and she's she's like meticulous about brushing her teeth after she eats. Right. I'm not. You know, I, I don't know how you do this. I don't brush my teeth after every meal. Do you? Oh God, no! I have no gums. It's bad enough. <laughs> I got a gum graft one time as it is. I floss, but I don't brush. You know yeah. what I'm saying? She's so. she's, brush, she's brushing after every meal. Right. I don't know. So, Maybe you say, listen, we're all leaving 10 minutes earlier so we can pull over to a, to a park area so mommy can brush her teeth <laughs> and rinse out with some Avion. I don't want it in the car. Right? So, Avion. Oh, when, fuck. When she goes to open the dash and look for the brush, you pull it out of your pocket going, it's right here. I'm going to pull over here and then we're going to all get out and you can brush by the park like a homeless person and then you can get back in the car. <laughs> I mean, you know, but you can't you can't leave a brushless. Oh. That's like that would be that's I, I'm wife. just come on, yeah, you can't. I that. know, I know. Listen, I'm yeah. just trying to figure out is this common? Is this something that that people are doing? Because I've just looked at the car as you. It takes you from point A to point B. I don't have stuff in the car, bro. The right. the center console of the car looks like a Sephora. All right. All right. <laughs> Uh, uh. This I make up this come on yeah. man yeah and it's I find there's a double standard at least in my life you know what I mean like I could leave like something in the car or maybe she'll go you know how long is that gonna stay in the car but then I'll go but what about the you know you got the thing and the you know the, the lipstick and then you got I need those things because I may need them at any given moment I'm like well I may need my piss cup at any moment <laughs> when I'm on a road trip. <laughs> I was using it, by the way. I drove to Long Island last week to do to do radio. Can you get arrested for taking a leak at a rest stop <laughs> in your car? In your car? Like, like, is that indecent exposure? If a cop pulls up, <laughs> I don't know. Well, what, did the rest stop didn't have a bathroom? And yeah, it had a bathroom, but I got the thing. So I'm like, I'm going to walk all the way there. Why not just bend over? I do that. Then what I do is then I drive... You know how the, you, you pull out a rest stop? I drive about 50 yards further up, pull in again, do a dump out the side <laughs> door. Because you don't want to dump right where you park. Because then they're like, oh, God, what is that? We all know what that was, guy. I mean, you, you, it, we see you through the window pretending to climb into the back of your car. And then 15 minutes later, you're dumping liquid out the dash at the side door. We know. Yeah. So you got to drive down a little bit. <laughs> I tell you, man, you knock. Five to seven minutes off the travel time if you do that without going inside. <laughs> no. Wait, wait no. a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, I, I, gotta, I gotta get this in, through my head. All right, man. You, 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 you piss in, in the cup where people park? Like, you know, like at a rest stop, there's a yes, parking area. but I got one of those medical sort of peeing things, like if you're in a hospital and you oh, yeah, 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 bed. So I got yeah, one yeah. of those, so... And I usually, as you know, we've talked about this, I bring it on the road in case I get caught in heavy traffic. I'm a very big drinker of coffee. If I get caught in heavy traffic or, you know, like I said, I've used it driving fast. Yeah, yeah. But so I knew I was going all the way to Long Island, which was eight hours. And I had all day. So I'm like, let me just bring this. I don't know what it's going to be like when I hit the Washington, George Washington Bridge. It could be crazy hour traffic and I'll have to pee. So then I pulled over to rest stop and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to walk. 75 yards in there, you know, open the stall. You know, just, I just grabbed that thing. I leaned over. I just did that. And then I strode a little further down to a dump. It was all raining and snow out anyway. No, 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 right parking lot. You're speeding right over this shit. When you piss in a cup or yeah. an apparatus in the car, yeah. it's, it's, it's very hard not to look from the outside that you're doing something like, you, you oh, I'll show you sitting, my move. I'll show you my okay, move. Yeah, what, yeah, what's the move? Okay, the move is, it's so simple, man, right? So I'm in the car, and then the window right next to me, I always have my coat, like, it's it's puffed up, so you can't see me through that window, right? What do you mean uh, puffed up? I mean, it, it, there's well, I got, a window. Like, I, got a, I, got, I usually got a bag on the driver's side with me, and then yeah. I got my winter coat, and I just, you know, it's bunched up right there. So when I turn around, I mean, you could see me from the waist up, but you can't see me. Can't see yeah, my yeah. waist down. So okay. then I pretend I turn around 
I get up and I put one knee in the driver's side like this, and I do this fake leaning in the back, like I'm, <laughs> like I'm fishing for something in the back seat, right, right? But really what I'm doing with my free hand is I'm setting everything up. <laughs> and then while I pee like this, I keep doing this, moving this off. <laughs> so they think I'm hunting for oh something in the back that I can't find. <laughs> <laughs> then the hard part is when you're done, you got to delicately put it on the floor of the drive of the passenger side. Slide around, rebuckle, then grab the cap, screw it on. Then you drive down 50 yards further down the rest stop. And you dump, and you're gone, baby. I mean, this is NASCAR shit, bro. This is NASCAR shit. <laughs> oh, fuck, bro. So, oh, man, when you go down to take the dump, where are you going outside in public? How do you, how do you disguise this? I, I pull into another spot, and I make sure there's no cars, like, right next to me. Yeah. And then I open up the door, and I dump. So you don't even see the apparatus. You just see liquid coming out at the bottom of the door. <laughs> <You know? laughs> then I do a little shake with it, put the cap on, throw it back on the floor of the passenger side. I feel, I feel like if what? a trooper ever pulled me over, he'd go, look at this white trash. Wait, wait, you know? wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold up. You're taking a shit. A I'll shit? Th this is all yeah, piss, guy. Oh, I thought you said you're taking a dump. No, I say oh, I dump no. it. Oh, oh you dump it. Oh, I thought God. you said you take. No. <laughs> I wouldn't even listen to this if I said that. <laughs> That's oh, okay. I got you. I got you. I was like, damn, this guy's a this guy's a bear. <laughs> no, man. This is just I pee a lot. That's all. Oh, but my God, point is, yeah. you're saying a lot of it gives you, uh, you know, leaves us stuff in the car. I'm, I'm, oh. we, I'm saying, but we can't leave us. It, to, to your thing, though, this is Jackie treats the couch. Uh, this is what bothers me, right? Like our couch, we keep it clean, obviously, blah, blah, blah. But every night she brings every night at a certain time, she pauses TV and then she'll go and she gets a big candy dish. And it's got licorice, Skittles. You know, anything, you know? And she just kind of, like, sucks and pokes and chews, like, as she goes along. <clears throat> then she'll later on, she'll pause whatever she's watching, and she goes and she gets a yogurt-covered almonds. Uh, you know, it's like, that's how she treats herself, and she runs like crazy, but she, pick, she uh, you know, picks at this kind of stuff every night. So, recently, um, we were taking measurements, we are going to get a new couch, and I, I, for whatever reason, I reached on them, I'm going to stuck. I got to clean under here. It's, I was looking for the dog's ball, too. Bro, I pulled out like a full handful. I, I was laying on a couch. I go, look at this. Candy cane, yogurt covered pretzels, gum. And I'm like, Jack. <laughs> and everything I pulled out, she like, she's like, whatever, I don't care. I, what do you mean you don't care? This is like an animal. Look at this. It's like Willy Wonka's candy shop here, right? But if I did it, it would be a big deal. But when they do it, they just... Blow right past it, like, well, hey, come on. I'm brushing my teeth. It's not a big deal that I'm brushing my teeth. But if you were brushing your teeth and, it, it, and she wasn't into it, that's how I feel. That's what I'm saying, man. All the stuff that they do is okay. Right. But, and, and, and I have to admit, though, not with my wife. I got, I, you know, this is where she's got me. <sighs> that day I ran into a car in the driveway, that day? No, you did with another yeah. car. Yeah. So. Oh wow, man, that takes away from credibility big time. That's what I'm saying. Now, <sighs> Lana got into yeah. an accident. She got she rear-ended somebody, and she said it was their fault. I don't know how the hell that happened, but that's what that's what she said. So much so where my wife has gotten into so many fender benders and what have you. Our insurance dropped us. The, they, they didn't like, even raise you. They just dropped you. No, they were like, "This is there's a problem at the oh. house." <laughs> <laughs> so, so, that start and so, stop traffic in LA is I, I never like that, man. It's like I'm doing sixty, and then all of a sudden I'm looking at tail lights, and I have a mini heart attack. It's too much. Yeah, well, you know, I look at it a little different. You know, like listen, this is how I grew up. 
if I did an accident or something, my father would like, well, you, why are you not paying attention? You know, like you'd, you'd get that, that song and dance, right? Yeah. It, it was never like, I, there's no accidents in my family. So when I, when I'm talking to her, I go, what happened? She goes, yeah, the person cut me right off. I, I you know, bang right in though. And then of course I go, well, you, you, you know, you, you were driving too close. You know, you, you, you right. anyway. We had to get a rental. I, I know what you want, though, bro. Because, like, someone tried to cut in when I was driving recently into the GW, and I wasn't going to let the guy in because he was cutting. But then he cut me off. And if I would have went straight, he would have hit me. Nobody could ever hit me because I see them before they see me. You know what I'm saying? I'm two steps ahead like you're saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm always looking at the guy... You know, when my wife's talking to me, I'm looking at the guy four or five cars up going, guy's weaving. Like, I, I see it. Right. I got to go over to the left. Then I'm going to floor it to get past him. <laughs> and then I watch him in my mirror <laughs> to see if he's what? drunk and he's going to come ram me when I slow down. Then when there's a few cars to pad me between that person, then he's now off my radar. <laughs> and now I'm back. <laughs> I do that with you. I'm right there with you. Oh, wives just drive along with <laughs> nothing, eating eggs and hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> eating eggs and brushing their teeth. <laughs> so, and I, I don't know if we discussed this on the cast, but when you're driving, and don't you look at the walk and stop for the pedestrians to indicate to yourself when that when that light's going to change? Right. Right. Well, like, I, so, w what I do here is I look at the the. Always look at my traffic light to see if what it's doing the other. Like if it's yellow that way, then I know I'm about to be green. If that's what you mean. No, no. I'm. I'm. Let's say you're approaching a green light. Right. Okay. You're. You're approaching a green light. What I do is I look off to the side to see if there's a walk sign. Yeah. Or a hand sign indicating to the pedestrian what the pedestrian is going to be doing. Now, right, right. if there's a walk sign, that's that's. Uh, Sorry, if there's a hand sign that's blinking, I know that light is what they call a stale green. It's oh. going to change. Right, right. Right? Yeah. Because it's indicating to the pedestrian, don't go because I'm going to change and you might not have the time to get across the street. <laughs> right? right, right, my God. That's like baseball, bro. You're stealing signs. <laughs> That's not even for you. That's for walkers only. You're looking over at the signs for the walkers to figure out if I got to step <laughs> on the gas to make this fucking light. <laughs> Holy shit. What a move. What a they don't teach that shit in driving school. They don't. This no. is like a, This is. <laughs> <laughs> so. <clears throat> my point is, and your point is, that we're at nine. 10 steps ahead of the traffic. That's mm -hmm. why, knock on wood, we're not banging anything. We're not hitting it. We're not hitting anything. So we get a rental. It's the same type of car. So there's no real change. It's an SUV. I tell my wife, I'm in, I'm in the office with my wife. I said, all right, I got to go. I'm late. So I'm going to take this call. It's a business call on the car ride to wherever I was going. I get in the car. I'm on the phone. Lana sees me get in the car. She turns around. I wave. Mm -hmm. Right? And I'm talking on the phone. And then I'm backing up. Now, there's a camera where I could see what's behind me. Right? Yeah. That, that camera is not on. It's not on okay. yet. Right. I'm used to the sensors, so if you are near something, it goes, da, 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 you know, it beeps. Right, right. I'm, oh, man. You drive uh, full uh, technology. <laughs> if you were a pilot on a plane, you, you, you're your instrument train guy. God, do you move your neck at all? God, <laughs> fucking camera's not working, so you're like, I'll rely on the beep. I mean, just turn your neck, guy. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Oh god! All right. So oh god! So, <laughs> no, no, bro, bro, look at the neck. Don't move, bro. The I neck see don't that. Move. <laughs> Left, right, nothing. It's straight ahead. So, I'm I'm backing out, and the phone rings. Another call. I'm getting another call while I'm on the call. 
I look down because the phone's on my lap. I look down. It's my wife, and all of a sudden, ba boom! I'm like, what the? F-? Uh-huh. I <laughs> I hit a car in my driveway that I didn't even see it, bro. I didn't even see when I got in the car. I didn't see it when I was in the car. I didn't see. It. And since this is a rental, the shit wasn't like work. Like they took the sensors and they they were off. Right. So, right. So and the camera. And this car takes a while to like warm up, whatever. Yeah. And I look down, it's my wife. Hit the car, and my wife hears it. She comes running out. She goes, Oh my God, I saw that. I saw that, like, I just saw that happening. And in my head, I'm like, What the fuck are you calling me for? <laughs> she she saw that happening, so she texted you instead of no, running out? No, 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 no. No, oh. oh. W- w- she was calling me for a different reason. Oh, but she, oh right, right. She was she was approaching me as she was calling. Like, right. So I look out. I get I get out. Right. I that's is that, the guy needs a new fender. I got a scratch on the the the, the rental. Okay. And Lana's like, oh my god, you know, are you okay? You know, doesn't yell at me, you dumb motherfucker. None of that shit, right? Right, right. Are you right. okay? Oh my god, that's such a shame that that had. That's that's. God, as long as you're okay and nobody got hurt, you know that that's that's oh. that's that's how she does it. Nice. And I wish she did it the other way. <laughs> I wish she came out and go, "Where's your head at, asshole?" Right, right. You know. Cause I'm right. hard on my I'm hard on myself that way, <laughs> right? But in my head, I'm blaming her. Going, I told you I'm late for the call. <laughs> what the fuck are you calling? I just saw you. Do you, do you ever talk to you ever talk to your wife? Right. You get in your car and you're driving, and two minutes later you get a phone call from her. Does this ever happen to you? Uh, well, when I'm at the store, I get it. Yeah, I get that. No, That's I'm like, talking. I'm talking no, like I'm seconds, pulling out no, Tuesday. Uh, hello. So what's going on? I'll just talk to you. Let's talk to you. Let me know what's going on. I got in the car and I'm at the stoplight. There's nothing going on. So oh, anyway, geez. so I I, the, I got two cars in the shop. Oh man, full tilt! You hit that thing. Damn. Full tilt, bro. Oh. Full tilt. And this is only this is like 15 miles an hour. And thank God I never got in a real accident where I'm going 67, 15 miles an hour. You would have thought that the guys. Hood would have been caved in. The, the the sound. I know it's frightening. I backed into snow, a snow pile the other day, and I was like, "Did I just hit a wall?" You know. So <laughs> now <clears throat> with Lana, though, it's like, you know, um, what was I going to say about the phone call? Um, even if she didn't call you, you still were going to back into that car. It's not her fault at all. But the only thing I, that would have been nice is if she, if she was mad, then you could have tried to you know project more. And be like, what are you calling me for? But it didn't matter. You weren't looking anyway, man. It didn't matter. You were already halfway through a call, starting to call anyway. I, I, yeah, no. Listen, I'm not going to argue there. I'm not going to argue that. I yeah. probably would have still gotten the accident. However, I feel like I would have been slightly more aware of my surroundings if that call didn't come in and I had to look down on my lap. I'm not saying it would have not happened, but in my head. I would have had some whereabouts of where I was. You might have, you might have had a little more. I hear you. I would have been a little more focused. Listen, I know we're gonna wrap up soon, so I gotta say I'm starting a new segment that's necessary for the cast called Loose Ends. Uh, oh yeah! This is the one right now we have. Is we the, we all dying to know? Before you get into loose ends, I think this is a, a good time for me to say that you're gonna be able. And he's going to give us a sample right now of loose ends. All right, all right? All right. But loose ends, and if I do say so myself, yeah. is going to be a part of the new Patreon podcast. Am, am I right on that? Well, yes and no. Loose ends is something that's almost got to be done every cast sometimes. It's when we okay. mention things that people are waiting to see how they play out. However, I am with you because on Patreon is when uh, I really want to do... Italian take again. Dare I try to say put some scenarios together, but we will have a solid Italian take. People have been missing that segment, bro. No, no. So, so, so uh, we're going live with our first uh, Patreon show next week. All right. Now, I'm going to tell the listeners what they're going to get for the five bucks a month. 
And by the way, you can go to patreon.com, just type in the Pete and Sebastian show. It will come up and it'll be self-explanatory how to sign up for the extra show a month. You're going to get an extra show a month. You're going to get behind the scenes footage. And what I mean by that is Pete and I, when we're telling a story or what have you, and we say, oh, I have the video, or sometimes we exchange videos on here that the people don't see. You're going to get exclusive video footage of stuff that we talk about on the cast. I'm building out a podcast room here, which you'll get a bird's eye view of the process of how that all works. Uh, Pete, Pete will be doing some videos on, uh, you know, his, his merch, how he packs it, where these, where these things are stored. And, uh, wait, there's, there's one more thing. The, the, the extra show, the, uh, behind the scenes and God damn, what's the third one? There's a third one, bro. And it's slipping my mind. I'll remember it. But next week is going to be the first show. You're going to get one extra show a month yeah. for five bucks. Again, this is not a money grab. This is just a support of the show. It's not right. something that we're looking to retire well, with. Again, again, yeah. we're doing we're doing this. We're doing this for free right now. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, I've been doing it for free for the last eight years. Yeah. So go ahead. Well, no, because it, it's not a money grab to your point, you know, and there's a little more, uh, you know, especially to where we are on now. There's still sometimes commercial, sometimes you know, I, I don't know. We're trying to make it, we try to be an entertaining show all the time, but maybe uh, the, for the Patreon show, put a little more effort into things. So it's going to be connected oh, to you. Nice. Yeah, it's going to be, it's gonna be connected it's to, gonna be it's going to be, con- yeah, connected to YouTube, which you're going to get a code for to check in on these videos that we're going to be doing. So that, that's going to be specific to the, uh, the, the Patreon uh, people. So yeah, it's, uh, we're going to try it out. We're going to see if it works. I mean, we have so much fun doing this cast and there's so much yeah. to talk about. And there's things that we can't get to. And now that we're taking this a little bit to the next level, uh, because to be honest with you, you know, Pete's, you know, by the way, bro, congratulations on this writing gig. Thank you, man. Can can we even, can we get, can we get into this as as far as what's going on? Yeah. All right. What's going on? Tell me. So the pilot I wrote with my uh, other writer, Pete Hoare is the guy's name. Great writer. We wrote together on Kevin Can Wait. Wrote a pilot for Mike Rappaport. Uh, based on it, took a meeting with Mike and the producer and stuff and kind of came up with an angle and they liked it. And finally, it took a long time because of, you know, the Wuhan special. But <laughs> mm. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, finally, all done and they announced today they greenlit it. So we got to write seven more episodes and we got to rewrite the pilot to make it fit what we're doing. So we got to write eight. We were going to film in Canada and now we're not filming in Canada. So we can, uh, you know, use uh, anyone. I think we're going to film in Jersey, but I'll keep you posted. We start, we take a meeting tomorrow, but it's officially greenlit. It was in Variety. Show running it. Me and him are co-show running it, co-created it with them. Look That's at it. No other guys writing it. No, Just me and this other guy writing all eight episodes of a comedy oh. called Flagrant Star Mike Rappaport. First of all, congratulations. Second Thank off. You, bro. Where can we see this? Is it on a platform? Is it streaming? Have we? What, what, what's going on? Of course, man. Streaming platform. Crackle is the first run where it'll be. The and then after that, you know, it's kind of like uh, if someone else likes it and wants to move it to somewhere else, it's fine. Or but you know, but it's the beauty of it though is they're being made, not like well, write them and then we'll see how it goes. It's like all. Here we go, man. So many times, you know, I'm in the writer's room and I'm like, Oh yeah. I wish it could be what I said instead of what he chose. And then and then and then when you write on a show, if it's not good, you can always be like, Well, I'm not, you know, I'm not the head writer at a show. So yeah, yeah. now if you say if you see this show and you go, dialogue sucked, I'll be like, hey, that's, <laughs> that's definitely on me. <laughs> that's I mean I can good. only throw so much under the other writer, but yeah. Oh, that's great. So, great. Congratulations thanks. on that. Pete's writing on his own show. And congratulations for the cameo you're going to have. In it. Oh, shit. I'm only kidding, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, I'm, seriously, so, I'm only kidding. But yeah. And uh, I'm looking forward to our new 
Patreon show. It's going to be yeah. exciting, man. New new show, and and I, I just want to, guys, you don't have to, you don't have to do this. This no, is we're, we're going to be, we still we're going to, yeah, you. we're going to be doing this our, our once a week on here. But this is something new that we're going to try out. Give you a little something extra. That's next week. So when you're listening to this, either Friday or Saturday, you're going to hear. Uh, obviously, next week we'll have a show, but then there's going to be an extra show on the Patreon platform. Go to patreon.com, search Pete and Sebastian show, sign up, five bucks a month, price of a cup of coffee. And I mean, I got to tell you, like yeah. reflecting back on this show, yeah. at least for me, I mean, you know, you get off these shows and you're like, oh, that one was okay. That, this one, right. I feel like, you know, sometimes it's just humming on all cylinders. Right. Right? Yeah. I mean, yes. It's just <laughs> and like, but I want it to be fun. I want it to be a good time. And, you know, and thank God you're the funniest motherfucker I know, man. <laughs> Makes it very easy. Uh, well, it just, it, 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 this show doesn't work. You can't do this show without one of us. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't, no. it's just, it's just. It just works, and when it works, yeah. it works. So, yeah. my uh, my uh, my thanks to everybody out there who supports the Pete and Sebastian Show, uh, Patreon.com, uh, Pete and Sebastian Show for an extra show and some behind the scenes footage. There's one more thing that you're gonna get. It's slipping my mind right now, but you'll see it uh, when you go to the uh, when you go to the platform. So, thanks for listening. We are gone. I got no more space on the memory card. It just ended. <laughs> wow. Wow. Perfect timing, man. All right. Great idea, brother. All right. Bye.